DJ Lissa Monet is an award-winning DJ. She is a, a music curator. She's a culture mascot, a dear, dear friend of mine. She's my, my caravan, a buddy, and really a student of life. Here is Gutsy Lissa Monet. did it I was young I was like in my 20s so during those times you don't really like care about you know bills and stuff like that so I came back I went on a trip to LA for a gig that I was booked on and I came back and I just quit my job because I just realized then and there that that was what I wanted to do and, and how Boston like it Boston. and what about mom <laughs> what did mom say well coming from a West Indian family you know they came here to build a better life for themselves. So it's like when their children do something that they is out of the plan, which is to go to school, get married, get a good job, in whatever order they feel best for them, it kind of it kind of disappoints them a little bit. Like for the first maybe three or four years, like after I quit my job, my mom kept sending me job postings instead of talking to them about it or you know kind of politely like refusing their job postings i would just prove it was like a show and prove thing so i worked really hard i managed to be financially independent through what i was doing you know once the awards started coming in they were like oh my gosh my daughter won an award and mm -hmm. blah, 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 exactly. tell all their friends and, you know so it for me it was more of a show and prove thing when it came to my parents and does that almost push you of to want to try it? Totally. The fact that you're like, I'm going to show them. Exactly. Because, I mean, being of West Indian parentage, they're quick to tell you when you fail as opposed to like reward you for your achievements and your accomplishments. So for me, it was more of a like motivational thing to like just show them like, listen, I'm, it's not conventional, but I can make it work for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, what was the what was what happened after that risk? Did you see reward right away? What how did taking that chance affect your life overall? Um, it was a slow crawl, but I mean, even you know, through the career achievements, there were still personal achievements that or personal things that lacked. So like for example, if you had a nine to five job, you knew that you knew where your money was coming from mm -hmm. on the first and the fifteenth, and you knew that you know, your check went to certain bills and stuff. And it was an adjustment knowing that, you know, you're just as good as your last gig and whatever you got paid from that gig, you know, you paid your bills, but then you have to work twice as hard to get another gig so you can pay next month's bills. So it was a bit of an adjustment. I learned a lot about having to like prioritize and save my money, which I really didn't do when I had a nine to five. I would get my paycheck and just go, Crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Knowing that there was another paycheck coming two weeks from then. There's so many people I feel like right now who are thinking about taking a risk or have a huge idea that they want to execute in some way, but they're afraid to take that leap. What would you say? What's your advice for people who are considering doing what you did? It's not easy. Yeah. Um, I would never tell anybody to just jump and do it the way that I did. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself coming back from LA and just quitting, if I had just thought it through a little bit more and like maybe like held on to my job for a few more months, I probably would have been a little bit more stable financially um, and mentally. Um, yeah, like just don't jump into it, like plan it out. Like if you know that your end goal is to work for yourself and to be your own boss, you, like at the end of the day, money, money, you need money to make money. So it's like, just plan your life out a little bit more. Don't just jump into it. I mean, if an amazing opportunity comes along and you know it feels right for you, then go ahead. By all means, go ahead. But like, don't don't jump into it. It's not fun, especially when you don't know like where your next 
you know, check is coming exactly. from. The other thing I wanted to say too is just kind of, you have to be your own coach because nobody around you is gonna understand how, like your passion for what it is that you wanna do. Um, you may have people who do feel the same way, but then you have people who are in regular nine to five jobs who can't even conceptualize what it's like to, you know, be an entrepreneur. So it's like, try not to get too many opinions from too many people because it could discourage you as much as it can encourage you. And, you know, for some weird reason, being discouraged impacts a lot more than being encouraged. So I would just advise you to kind of just still listen to what's inside. Do you want to tell me what gutsy means to you? Like, what's your definition? When, when you think of that was a gutsy move, or that gut, girl's gutsy. What does that mean to you? I think being gutsy is just kind of following, creating your own path, um, and not being, not being apologetic about it. Um, just stand your ground, and you know, cre creating your own philosophy um, that works for you, and you know, not. I mean, still op being open to other opinions, but know, know within yourself, like. I'm doing this move because it works for me and it's not it's not to appease anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well awesome, always proud of you. <laughs> Love to see what, what you're doing Thank and you. rooting, cheering for you always. So thanks so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's, that's all. Bloopers! <laughs>